Well, it's been more than two years since Google Stadia released, and it's been almost a year since Google announced that they were gonna be closing down any of their internal studios that they had formed in order to make games for the platform. I think it was around that time that I really checked out of Stadia and just hadn't really been looking at it much at all. But it's still around. In fact, they've been updating Google Stadia for a while now, and I thought we would jump back in and see what exactly they've done here. So if you guys enjoy this video, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. So I do have this Google Stadia Premiere Edition that I ordered a while ago when they were doing like the free Google Stadia boxes. If you remember, at one point it popped up, I saw Wario64 tweet it out. And what it was, it was if you were a member for YouTube Premium with Google, which I am, you would be able to just get one of these sent out to you. I, I went through it very quickly and this showed up like a week later and I've kind of been holding on to it ever since. I was actually trying to figure out what I was gonna do with it and you know what, it, it makes sense to just use this here with the controller and then jump into Google Stadia now. We can just go ahead and pop this open. I think you should still be able to buy these pretty easily. I, I don't think they're running through these very quickly right now. The biggest thing about what Google did, did here with, with their platform with Stadia was the controller. Like I legitimately think the controller is well done. It feels pretty good in the hands. Control sticks are good. D-pad, not the best. It's kind of clicky and honestly the shape throws me off a little bit there, but it has the standard symmetrical sticks here down at the bottom. We have our Google Stadia button, A, B, X, Y. And around the back here we do have Pretty loose triggers, I would say, but they grip well enough. And then we have USB-C charging. Inside, we do have our charging cable brick. And underneath of here, we have our Chromecast. So if you wanna hook it up to your TV, you can do so. We are just gonna be using the controller with a web browser. That way it's a bit easier to capture footage. But now I'm gonna go ahead, charge up the controller a bit and we'll connect to a computer through the web browser and see what Stadia looks like now. Okay, so it has legitimately been years since I've used Google Stadia. I'm on the browser now, but I do have to sync up the Stadia controller, which when you turn it on after I've charged it for a little bit, remember you have to sync it up through your through your router, through the internet to their servers. It doesn't actually sync up to whatever screen or device that you're using. So I can sync a controller. It shows you like the button combination here. So right, Y, up, Y. And there it goes. All right, now we're synced up and we can start looking around. So this is the home page here. It does look a bit different than what I remember. When it launched, it was super bare bones. You couldn't even buy games through the browser. You had to use the phone app to buy a game and then you could go to your browser and play it there or through the Chromecast and all of this. It was very strange. I think when it launched, it was certainly a knee jerk reaction from Google because they wanted to beat things like Luna and even Xbox with xCloud at the time to market. And unfortunately that meant that they just didn't have a lot to offer immediately. They had some games like because of the pro membership they gave you games and I have not checked in, but I've kept that pro subscription going just in case Stadia did something interesting and they never really did necessarily. So let's take a look to see, like you can see my library is Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, Final Fantasy 15, and then Samurai Showdown. All games that were pretty much there around launch. These are the pro games that I can claim. So I have Dirt 5, Hitman, that's the first season, and then Wreckfest. So I guess I'll be claiming those. Let me go up to the store and see how things look up there. We do have free games. There's on sale new releases. Stadia Pro Games, there's actually a lot here for Pro Games, it says see all. Wow, okay. Control Ultimate Edition, Bloodstained, Moonlighter, Blue Fire, Trails of Cold Steel 3. These are all games that are part of the Pro membership that I can just play. Ease 8, that's pretty good. Dirt 5, of course, went over Terraria. Shantae, Risky's Revenge. Destroy All Humans, and Oh, MotoGP 2.0, that's not bad. Real quick before I claim one of these, let's go to the, I guess the home button, home screen. There I am there, spawn. I have friend requests, I have, there's parties, so I guess you can make parties here. Oh, you can, look at that. So you can start a party, 
get that going and then you can also live stream that's definitely not something that was there when uh, when i was first playing it so the ability to to live stream it says in full quality without extra strain on your bandwidth no special software webcam needed and then you can also just connect to software so i guess like obs or, or something there so what should we claim let's you know what let's claim darksiders 3 i feel like that's a, a game that I'll be able to feel any kind of input latency because it's it's more of an action-y style game. Let's see. So we'll go to claim. And that's I mean that's pretty that is the benefit of Stadia over everything is convenience. Like that's the major thing. The idea that you can just hit a button and the thing starts up just like that. That's something that for the most part people point out all the time is that yes, there's input latency. Yes, the picture quality isn't as good as a native system like an Xbox or a PlayStation or anything like that. But the idea of being able to travel with an Xbox, PlayStation or Stadia controller and then just connect through web browser. I mean, yeah, there, there is a, a massive benefit there for people. So let's go into new game here and we'll just start that up real quick and jump in. Okay, so we're into the game now. And I'll admit, it's not as, like, laggy as I would expect, like, a streaming service to be. Certainly not how it used to be way back in the day with, like, Gaikai or OnLive. It's gotten better, as you expect, with technology. It's still something you can feel, but I, I feel like it would, if there is nothing else you can do and you have to use this... I think it serves, whoa, there's, okay, so I am also seeing some frame rate issues at times, which is kind of a shame, considering the, one of their biggest things was they had like 10.7 teraflops of power backing this, then they have all this scalability to do some crazy games, but at times you do still get that frame rate hiccup here and there while you're playing. I think the biggest problem I've had with Stadia is that they didn't really know what they wanted to be. And they still kind of don't necessarily, although I think they've sort of found their way to a certain destination with it. Originally, they wanted to be uh, compared to, like, just straight up Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo as a game publisher and a platform to, to buy games on with, uh, with the marketplace and all of this. Now they are mostly just kind of like Steam, but they, they stream everything to your, to your system right so you buy the stuff through them at full price right and, and that's kind of it you don't get a physical copy and you don't have anything say downloaded to a system it's all reliant on google being up running and being able to stream to you which does put people off when it comes to buying games for full price especially like i'm seeing some pretty substantial frame drops here and people like on the subreddit for example do point this out and they say hey they're there are some pretty serious issues when it comes to, say, connecting to the servers and getting a smooth experience during peak hours. I mean, if you look around at the Reddit and other places, the biggest thing people bring up when it comes to pros for using Stadia or a streaming platform like this is there's no updates, no downloads, install times, nothing. You just jump right in and in a few minutes you'll be playing a game that you might be downloading for up to an hour on other platforms, even with good internet. Now, the thing that Stadia has over other streaming platforms is their picture quality it tends to be better. It's it's 4K, and yeah, it's upscaled in a lot of games, but it does come through much clearer than I've seen with things like Xbox Game Streaming or Luna. And they do have two different tiers. And this is something I didn't even really know too much about until recently. They have an entire free tier. Like, you don't actually have to pay Google Stadia a monthly subscription in order to use it. Also, navigating around the, the website or the menu they have here in your browser with the controller, not great. It's not very intuitive. It's kind of all over the place. I'd prefer something like what Steam has with a big picture mode. Anyway, back to the store. I did mention there is a free tier, which, yeah, you don't actually have to sign up or use a credit card or anything to play Stadia. If you have a Google account and you buy a game on Stadia, you can just stream it at 1080p 60 frames per second. And that's basically what the browser supports anyway. So if you do wanna play a free game, which they do have some on here, you don't need any kind of account. And that includes even like Destiny 2. If you've ever just wanted to try out Destiny 2, you don't have any sort of game system, technically even a controller, and you have like a junky laptop, yeah, you can just stream Destiny 2 and try it out. You could also do, what's this, Hitman Free Starter Pack. PUBG, which was uh, recently 
went free. Let's see what other ones they have on here. Okay, so it's Super Bomberman R Online, which that was a good one for them to pick up and throw on there. It's just a fun, large-scale uh, Bomberman multiplayer game, but that's something that they should have done out of the gate. Like, they should have worked really hard to get something like Fortnite on here as a free-to-play option and a way for people to just jump onto Stadia and try it out because that is something that people look at and say, I don't know if I want to throw 50 or 50 or 60 bucks in for a game and then also do like a pro subscription on top of that. Well, you don't need to do that now, but if they had that set up back when they first launched a couple of years ago, I think they would be in a better spot now because more people would have tried it out just, just to see. Okay, back to the store. Let's go ahead and claim Control Ultimate Edition. We'll do start to finish right here. Press A after I just claimed it. And we'll see how long this takes to, to load up. You know what the big jumping off point for Stadia was? It it had to have been when Cyberpunk... All right, this is weird. So I have to press any key to open in full screen, but not on the controller. I have to do it on the keyboard. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, but the big jumping off point for Stadia was Cyberpunk. It's very weird to think about that. But when Cyberpunk released, it was busted across the board. However... The Stadia version was like the best way to play it or the most stable way to play it, apparently. And people had genuinely good experiences using Google service. And that seemed to have them do an about face as after that whole thing happened with Cyberpunk and people started gravitating towards uh, Stadia to play that game. Google was like, oh, we don't need to necessarily make games if we can provide a platform where certain games will just work better and that's sort of what state or google did now after they closed down those studios like i said seemingly just after all of that went down with cyberpunk so what should we do we have graphics mode for high frame rate hmm i think i'm gonna go high frame rate i just prefer to just have the the smooth motion to it let's just go to start new game load time that's the other thing i've noticed with stadia and it's really funny to think about that now when I'm playing on the Xbox or the PS5, you just don't see as many load screens at all anymore. So now I see a load screen even on Stadia, and I'm like, oh, I gotta sit here and wait for this bar. Even like a year after those systems are out, I'm already like over different load screens popping up. I don't wanna see them anymore. So I'm into control now, and the latency isn't terrible. It's, it's not so bad that it would be unplayable. It's there, like you can feel it when you're moving around. This is supposed to be the high frame rate mode and generally that means it will feel uh, much more responsive. Not necessarily, this still feels like it's like 30 FPS or just a lower frame rate that when you go to move the stick around, it, it kind of takes a second to go with you. But visually speaking, in terms of image quality, it's pretty good for a streaming platform. Even here, I'm noticing that it doesn't look like a cross stream through uh, through YouTube when you're watching. Maybe this is just old me speaking, but I, I feel kind of strange about the idea of still just buying a game that is just streamed to you for full price. I mean, sure, if it's like 10 bucks, you might say, ah, oh, that could be worth it. But for like a full $60 game and you don't download any of it, so you don't have it on like on a hard drive or an SSD, and you don't have a disc or a cartridge for it. I don't know. It still just feels strange to me. But again, maybe that's just the old person in me looking at it that way. So far, it's not too bad from a convenience standpoint. And I think something like Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel 3, or Ease 8, Lacrimosa of Donna, those would probably play fine through Stadia. Any Anything else that would be like a even slower JRPG, like a turn-based JRPG, would probably be perfectly fine. Let's try... A racing game because typically th this or like a fighting game or FPS would be some of the best examples of really feeling the latency that comes with a streaming platform. Ah, there's once again, press any key to open full screen. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Go. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so immediately, uh, immediately you can you can feel the the input lazy that's the thing racing games in particular are games that need to be like higher frame rate smooth experiences otherwise you will notice it very very quickly you can notice here i also noticed this with uh with forza if i tried it out with xbox game streaming same deal you can tell that there is latency the entire way and generally when you're playing a racing game because of how fast things move like you can see it here especially the trees that go by it is noticeable like compression and artifacting um, around that. And that's just because of how fast things are and how much the camera is moving. You kind of get that, that, I guess it's like a dithering effect is how you'd say it. For 
some of the the different things in the background or things that you'd be looking at right in front of you when you're when you're moving around so again sure you could probably work with it and you might get used to it even as you're playing it just not the best experience i will say the sadia controller is not bad for racing games here the the triggers are a little loose when you press it down, but it is fully analog, and you do still get that like slow acceleration if you barely ta press it down, or the full throttle acceleration if you hold it down all the way. And I know Stadia has pretty much been this punching bag for a while now, basically since it was announced. But I think a lot of that had to do with the way that Google Stadia launched. We had to buy like a $130 package with a Chromecast just to get on board. And then Google seemingly unsure as to what to do here when it came to first party studios and how to navigate the space, despite saying they were going to compete in the space against some pretty large companies. But now where it is more as a utility that you can have for convenience, especially since you can play some games just completely free without having to put any money in, which is how it should have been when it launched for people to try it out. You know, it's not bad. I think people clicked on the video thinking I was just going to rag on Google Stadia for like half an hour or something, but I, I think you should try it out. Just see what you think about game streaming with Google Stadia, especially if you have a Google account already, like a Gmail or something. You just go in there, click it, and see what you think about game streaming and something like Destiny 2. But let me know what you guys think about Google Stadia down below, especially if you're someone who's been using it for the last couple of years, basically since it released, and if you've seen some of the improvements and changes they've been making since then. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.